Good morning, good morning. So how are we team? Or in fact, good afternoon. Um, with my, I thought I'd choose a different crazy creature from our house today to be able to stand in front of. And that is the beautiful dung beetle because he works so hard all day long. And he is an absolute pivotal part of um, the ecosystem uh, down in Africa where he lives. So I thought he'd be a very apt person to be standing in front of. Um, so I just thought I would just say, morning, Rob, how are you? Or afternoon. So I just thought I'd come out here as far as, obviously, um, leadership is a high energy sport. <laughs> it doesn't really matter which way we want to look at it. Being a commander, being a leader, standing in front of people all the time, helping make decisions is a high energy activity. And one of the things that I'm sure that we all suffer from sometimes is just exhaustion. <laughs> um, I know that when I was in my final job as I was uh, leaving the military, I literally some mornings couldn't get up. I physically couldn't get up. My body was exhausted. Um, mentally, I was exhausted. I was wrestling with a lot of toxic leadership. Um, as in the people I was working for, I hasten to add rather than God willing myself. Um, and what I think is really interesting here is that it's not all about what you eat. So it's not all about, you know, I've got, what have I got close to door to me? It's not all about the lovely Marmite or how much caffeine you're having or whatever. So does it make a difference? Yes, it does. Of course it does. So when we're exploring your energy and how do you keep your energy levels up? What I'd also invite you to explore is the mental aspect. So practically, yes, we've got the things we often talk about. So you've got the idea of the fact you need to sleep so that you can actually allow your brain to decompress. And we all kind of know that, but how many of us always make sure we prioritise it? And I know that for me, when I'm really busy and I've got a thousand things going around my head, often I will potentially, for example, be guilty of taking my phone next to me at night times um and similarly that is a complete you know non-starter because then actually it's within close reach when you're needing to 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 look at something so always if you can keep your phone out in a different room or charging somewhere else but that wasn't so much what I wanted to talk to about today because we've got the food we've got the sleep you've got the exercise and I think you guys you know you guys are experienced people you you know all that stuff one thing I'd love to invite you to explore, though, is creativity. How does creativity really refire our energy? So the wonderful part of been exploring recently is the idea as far as, say, for example, at the moment, we're all having to be quite innovative. Or in fact, I say we're all. Those who are choosing to be innovative are succeeding. Those who are choosing to be creative and innovative in how they run their businesses, how they approach their leadership challenges, they're the ones I see anyway each week winning. They're the ones who've got coherent teams, who are developing new um, solutions to different problems as they arrive, that as one market has kind of disappeared overnight, that the next one is coming in. Um, but it's that creativity that I would love you to explore is when you're getting exhausted, often it's when we've been doing the same thing again and again and again. We've been trying the same um, ways to battle our exhaustion again and again. And yet one of the wonderful things I find, especially, I don't know if you've ever been on a conversation where, morning, David, um, where you've been in a conversation and suddenly you're like, oh my goodness, you feel alive because that person has triggered something really wonderful within your brain and it's fired your interest, it's fired your kind of passion for the day and it really reinvigorates you. So I'd love you to explore how can you create the more opportunities for your team to also be being creative so that either when you're looking at who do you have around you, you're putting those people around you that you know fire your imagination, that are also being versatile and trying new options, exploring new ways of doing business. Because if we're just in the same old, same old, same old, Yes, I mean, I could come on here and discuss about sleep issues and food issues and exercise issues, but I think you guys have heard that a lot. One thing I don't think we often discuss enough is the idea of creative genius around us also creating an inner passion, an inner drive, 
and an absolute inner energy within every one of our teams to be a little bit like our wonderful um, <laughs> dung beetle here. So that even when you're having a really rubbish day and it feels like you're pushing everything uphill all day, every day, if you've got people who are around you that can just make you laugh. Do you know what I mean? So when things are really bad, one of the best ways of getting rid of kind of stress is to laugh. It's having people around you that can just break the atmosphere of tension and help you smile again, release that energy again and put you back onto the track, be it whether you're the leader or whether you're one of the followers in someone else's team and bringing that energy back in. Wonderful, Chris, wonderful to see you. Hello, America. So Chris, you went round a marathon with me. My goodness, were you brave and patient. Um, and Rob, I know you're training for the Marathon de Sable. So again, this energy aspect is so important, but we all know it's not just about the food. So Chris, yes, did your wonderful husband come and stand at, I think it was like the 11 mile mark and the 15 mile mark with bananas and bits and pieces for us. So yes, that part of feeding our body is really important, but I'm also exploring about feeding the brain. So Chris, when you and I were doing that marathon training over in the DC and, uh, I remember you used to do like a 14 mile loop, but we'd go past um, statues and monuments and parks and different architecture and um, amazing different parts of the city. And so for me, that energized and reinvigorated me when I got exhausted. So I'd love you to explore, how are you coping? Because I remember literally collapsing on the floor and not being able to move. And that wasn't that long ago. That was actually just after I'd started running my own business and leaving the army where I used to go and go and go and go and go. And then I would collapse. Then I would try and recover. And then I would collapse again. And literally, I remember in my flat in London, waking up and realizing that I'd gone to sleep on the floor on the way to my bedroom. <laughs> and it's a small flat, so it wasn't far. So again, like I was saying, so my last job in the army, I literally had days um, and some of the guys in this group, you know, were my bosses and I was working with at the time. I physically couldn't even get myself to a doctor. I couldn't even get myself to the bathroom. I had to just lie there and wait one of those days and only had a handful of them. Thank goodness. I had to wait for about three, four hours. I had enough energy to pick up my phone because unfortunately that is the good side of having it next to you, type in not able to get to work to my boss at the time. And luckily he knew that, you know, I wasn't a shirk, never, I've never been a shirker. I've always been a hard worker. And so he was flexible. He just said, Alice, are you okay? And I said, I just have no idea what's happened. So I just invite you to explore that if you're getting to the edge of exhaustion, this is a really important piece of making sure you do look after yourself physically. But when you're looking at that, it's not just looking at the eating, the sleeping, the physical piece. It's also looking at the intellectual stimulation. Because one of the things that exhausts me, and I, when I'm speaking to a lot of different people within the client team that I'm working with, or colleagues as well, is the emotional exhaustion. And that, at the moment, I think is really, really one of our key areas to look at, being emotionally exhausted. And we talked last week about fear and cortisol and the idea of this adrenaline pumping through your body all the time, which again is what you get when you've got the creatives around you, they get you all excited. But often what will then happen afterwards is that you'll crash because all that adrenaline will crash afterwards. We've all been there where you go on holiday and suddenly you get sick when you're on holiday and you're thinking, how does this work? I've just been running on, you know, thin air for the last few weeks and suddenly I'm getting sick when I'm on holiday. Well, that's also because your adrenaline levels are uh, reducing. And so ironically, it's as your body is coming back towards an equilibrium and now it's starting to realise that actually it needs to recover. And so it's almost putting itself back towards trying to get a level playing field. So one of the things I would definitely, and I know there's every, so many people are all caffeine and sugar junkies. Um, one of the best things I've ever done is, is becoming uh, no caffeine. Um, it helps the fact that I get Tourette's 
unfortunately, when I have caffeine. So actually it was a bit of a social push <laughs> rather than the health one that meant that I realised that if I had caffeine, I became um, a little uh, less polite in the way I spoke. I've got no idea where it came from. It's one of those things inside your mind, heaven only knows, but with caffeine. So yes, if you ever want to have a bit of a laugh is give me a cup of tea because I drink decaf normally and give me a cup of tea and see what happens. Even if I end up swearing on the telephone sometimes because, you know, the joys of being in the army, you often use them as adjectives rather than expletives. Oh my goodness, I, I, I just had no concept of the fact that it was related to caffeine. So luckily... I learned that pretty quickly early on in the army. So I was able to remove all caffeine. And that was because the soldiers were so wonderful at bringing me tea all the time. They'd always be bringing you tea. And this is the wonderful part about being in a team. Often they'll bring you a drink. Then just say, put something that's in the cupboard that's a decaf. Oops, got my lovely little decaf stuff here. You know, have a herbal tea, whatever it is. But make sure you remove all the difficult bits. But coming back to that creativity is make sure the people around you are creative and that they are the people who are firing up you. So when we're looking at the moment at hiring and firing of different people, I just explore, are the ones you're keeping around you and the ones who are helping look after you, are they the creatives? Are they the ones that are really helping keep your energy going? So, and similarly, yes, you obviously need times where you're gonna be a lot more steady, um, but that creative energy can really, really make a big, big difference to our exhaustion levels. But as I say, with the adrenaline going round, is make sure you take some rest. And similarly, when you're firing your mind all the time, is make sure that you settle your mind. So look at your sleeping, look at your food, look at your exercise. We all know that. But this is something that I would, and hence why today I thought, what's the different thing I can suggest to you is look at your creativity. When are you at your creative best? How is this being bringing the best to you as a leader? How are you ensuring that you are that high energy leader that also means high energy intellectually too? And are you setting yourself up for success? Because if you start to be lacking in imagination, creativity, versatility, losing your drive, your team will feel it. And I think that's where I'm seeing a lot of people before the summer we're definitely in that space and they've now started to take a take a they've obviously now been taking a break but if we're going to be like this beautiful little man behind me working away every day got to explore all the different ways in which you can find those pieces to charge your energy another state change i also love is music and tempo so again if you're looking at how to recharge your energy is also look at do you have music in the background or do you have quiet and how do you fluctuate between the two to help rejuvenate your energy? So any queries, guys, wonderful to see you. And um, sleep. I'm hoping that means that, Lynette, I'm, I'm not sending you to sleep. <laughs> that this is instead. So we had a fascinating chat last night about being the, on the edge of that wave when we're all working so hard that actually it can be really exciting when you're on the crest of a wave, being able to go through all those challenges but also making sure that it's not where we get to the exhaustion and burnout point and finding that edge of really high performance so that you're on the edge of high performance all the time doesn't mean burning yourself out. It means tweaking a bit like when you're sailing a boat or when you're driving a fast car. It means tweaking your style and tweaking the way you're running your ship, running your business. So you're right at the edge of that performance but not where you're then burning yourself out. So just imagine, you, we make sure that we refuel a car, we make sure that the tires are good, that you've got good traction, you make sure that everything is inside, you do your checks and balances. As in as looking at when do you put the energy on, when do you surge on, then when do you pull back? Because you can't surge all the time. And a boss of mine actually said, he said, Alice, you're working at 120%. And I was like, yeah, yeah, is that good? He said, no, that's a disaster. I was like, what? He said, no, that's a disaster. I need you working at 80%. You need to be working at 80% all the time because I need 20% for when you're going to be doing that little bit extra for me. Hello, Mr. Joe. Wow, amazing from America. Lovely to see you. Well, we've just been talking about energy and you are definitely a high energy man. So, um, and we've been talking about creativity. So very apt as well. Looking at creativity, rejuvenating, rejuvenating us, 
bringing around really brilliant, strong teams is ensuring you've got a creative base as well as having the normal energy styles, if that makes sense, of looking at your food, your sleep, your um, uh, the rest you're taking, but looking at your creativity. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to see you guys. Such a treat. Have a great day from up here in, up in Scotland and from our... Uh, Mr. Dung Beetle, and any queries from you guys, any que or thoughts, love to hear your thoughts on how you keep your energy going. Um, if you've got any top tips, uh, Sophia, you also do loads of this energy work and you're a very high energy person too, so really exciting to see so many of you guys on here. Um, love to hear your thoughts, so drop below, what are your tips, what's your favourite thing that you have for keeping your energy high? Because my goodness, are we going to need it now? Literally, as we're preparing, using this time to recharge, this August period to recharge, ready for our autumn and winter surge onto Christmas. I'll be thinking about Mr. Dung Beetle all day. Oh, bless him, yes. But isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? Yeah, I brought him back with me from South Africa. And that's it. It's just we need to keep enough energy that we keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, because that consistency of leadership is also critical. Nothing worse than a peak and trough. Someone goes loads of ideas, good idea fairy, throws everything out, creates chaos and walks away again. We need to make sure that we are here every day, being, bringing your brilliance every day, so not to be dull, but here every day, consistent and working hard to produce the goods. Bless you. So have a wonderful day. Love to hear your thoughts um, and any topics that you'd like. So um, I've had one topic which has been requested about uh, adrenal glands but I need to learn a little bit about that before I can do that um, but yeah it's also looking at all the different aspects of your of your body if you can is exploring how is your body responding to the different requirements for energy but we'll probably cover that in a different day ciao for now lovely to see you all have a great day bye